Hey right guys, Trace Munch is Joey and today we're going to be doing another tier list video. I'm going to just make a playlist for these because I've done about five already I think and I'm going to do another two today. I'm going to do this one which is TV series and then I'm also going to do another one today which is anime that I've reacted to, uh, not reacted to, anime that I've watched and I'm going to be ranking those as well. And yeah, I, I still have fun doing them. I know they're kind of overdone <laughs> at the moment because seven people are doing these but I don't know, I just get enjoyment out of listing things anyway and it's kind of a good way for me to show, at least with this video, like what my favourite TV series are ranked. And for so long I've wanted to do like my top 25 TV series of all time. And from a video like this you can basically just get the gist of that anyway. So I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone here. And yeah, I'm excited. Shout out to James, um, I'm going to leave his Twitter down below for creating this list and the anime list for me because I had no idea what I was doing when I tried. And James very generously offered to create the list for me as well as Lizzie as well as uh, she made a list for me which I'm going to leave both of them down below. Uh, one is for every TV show that I've reacted to and another is for every TV show that I've reacted to plus other shows that I've seen. Um, so these are basically just TV shows that I've seen because there were lists for TV shows but about 50% of them I hadn't seen um, or at least seen enough of seen enough of to get a real feel for how I feel about the show. I'm going to leave a link to both of the lists down below if you want to check them out. If you want to do your own uh, kind of ranking of them all and tweet me your kind of or screenshot it and send it me what what your kind of listing of it is of is as well. well. I can't even speak today, Jesus. <laughs> and yeah, we'll compare how different our lists kind of are because that'll be fun to do. So yeah, I'm going to do this one and the anime one and we might be here for a while because I end up just rambling on and I don't r really edit these too much. Okay, so here we are with the list. As you can see, we've got quite a few shows to kind of get through, uh, which so like I said, we're going to be here for a while, but I'm going to just change the names. So we've got S, A, B, C, D and F. I'm just going to change the names of them. Okay, so we've got Best of the Best, Bloody Fantastic, Great, Enjoyable, Net and just Absolute Trash. Of course, you've got a Bloody Fantastic in there if you do it. You know, we're British, we've got to do that. So that's kind of what we'll list them as and I guess we'll just get started. So Black Mirror. This is Okay, this is interesting because I've just reacted to the latest season of that and I thought that season was fairly weak for Black Mirror standards, so I'm going to put it at fantastic. I think it could have been there if the last season was as good as the rest of the show has been, but because of that last season I'm going to put it at the top of there for now. The OA, uh, I've been getting requests and kind of people telling me to react to the second season of that because I did react to season one and I actually really, really enjoyed it. I'd say it was an enjoyable, very different show. Uh, I think the acting is fantastic. Still a few kind of, up, definitely a few downs with the first season as well, but overall it wasn't like something I'd seen before and I do really want to watch season two of that, so. Lost, despite its flaws, I know it does have flaws. Yeah, I'm one of those people who adore the finale and how it all wrapped up. I think the characters are just wonderful. The, the island itself, the mystery behind it, like I've never been so invested in a TV show with its mysteries and yes some a few didn't really pay off by the end of it but overall I was left satisfied with it so if you follow me on Twitter you know I obsess over Lost and it's just it's just the best of the best I know technically maybe it isn't for a lot of people but for me it just yeah I love it uh Shadowhunters see all the teen dramas in this list are just gonna <laughs> piss a lot of people off because like I say, some of these shows I know technically they should not be as high as they are and going to end up being. But for me personally, um, it's just how much enjoyment do I get out of a certain show and Shadowhunters, I get a lot of enjoyment out of that show. I think the first season is pretty bad, uh, but season two and three, I think what really holds it up for me is just the characters. I love, I'd say 95% of the characters in that show, which is very rare for a TV show to love that amount of, like, love that amount of characters. Not just, you know, kind of like, but love that amount. So, yeah, I know technically it probably belongs somewhere maybe here. Uh, and for a lot of people, I'm guessing they'd put it there. But for me, enjoyment, I might put it at the top of great for now. Because it is a, f it's like, do you look at it as, like, critically? Like, technically, yeah. I'll put it there for now. It might change, though. We'll see. And with an E. Uh, I I love. I was so surprised by that show. I say it's better than Black Mirror for now. Like overall, it's only had two seasons, but 
I don't know, when I first reacted to episode one and two, I was a bit like, is this really going to be a show for me? And then it just blew me away. It just, I don't know, the emotions it brought out of me, like with the episodes, I did not expect. So if you haven't watched Amber Denis, definitely not for everyone, but give it a chance. Get past the first two episodes. I say the first two episodes are kind of slow and sluggish, but episode three was where it, where it really started to pick up. Buffy, great show. Again, it's very, very long, so I don't know how it's going to hold up with later seasons. I'm only on episode 14 of season two, so I can't speak for the show as a whole. But for now, I'd probably put it... I'd put it just below Shadowhunters for now. I'm really, really enjoying it. And the character of Buffy is great. So hopefully you can stay up there as well. 24 is another one of those shows where I'm like... I know technically it doesn't belong where I'm going to put it. But for me, it's a show... It's the first show, I think, out of all of these or so ever that I really was truly invested in like a tr proper tv show not like kids tv shows and all that stuff but real tv show that i became fully obsessed with like literally obsessed <laughs> i owned all the box sets and i watched them all on repeat like before school i was watching it kind of a bit too young at the age i was but 24 i love it and it goes in best of the best for me just more of the nostalgia reasons and the good memories i have watching that show um, so yeah, like I say, technically it's probably probably more great, but for me, best of the best. Scam Austin, uh, I'd put as enjoyable for now. I think the first, I'd put it above the OA as well. I really enjoy it. I think the first couple of episodes in season one and the first couple of episodes in season two were kind of bad. But both seasons, once they start to get into the pace of things, ends up being really, really good, so... And the actors and actresses in that show are just the nicest people, so got got to show them the love. <laughs> uh, 13 Reasons Why I... If I was going from season one, it would probably be fantastic. But season two, especially the first half of season two, was very slow. Uh, I didn't think it needed to be 13 episodes. You know, there's 13 Reasons Why, so it's like, obviously they're going to do that. <laughs> Inevitable can't. I'm glad, I was so glad when 24 stopped doing 24 episodes a season because it was called 24. And when they started to do 12, it was just a lot more concise. But the only reasons why I'd put maybe below Buffy here just because of season two. Season two had moments for sure, and they're doing a season three as well. I just don't see why. Like, this show should have been just one season, but we get more. Um, so I think it could have been best of the best. No, it would have been, sorry, it would have been fantastic if it was just season one, but season two knocks it down to there. You. That surprised me by how enjoyable this was. Only one season, they're doing a second season, and I don't know if that'll make the show worse as a whole, because I don't really know, there's a lot they can do with season two, but I hope they don't mess it up. <laughs> it's a show that I can see them easily ruining with a second season and if they overstay it's welcome with it but judging from season one i'm gonna put it probably above 30 reasons why just there actually no i'd put it above buffy for now i think i prefer the characters in buffy but there's quite a few weak episodes with buffy that i've seen so far i think after completing buffy it'll be a lot higher but just for where i'm at now um you was a lot more compact and really enjoyed the first season gossip girl dude yo this is straight up the best teen drama of all time i would have loved to have reacted to this show with like new eyes like having never seen it before it would have been such a treat to do uh, but i just kind of ended up binging the i think i binged every season up until the last season in about a month which you know for me <laughs> for me that is a very short amount of time um, so Gossip Girl, honestly, I'd put it as up here. I know technically it's, it's not, maybe. I'm going to keep saying that for shows that I think most people would be annoyed at being high up, but like I said, it's just kind of how I feel with it. I have a lot of good memories watching that show. I had so much fun with it as well. I was so invested with the characters. and It does have, it does have a lot of flaws. Um, God, that cup of tea now is. I, it's nowhere near a perfect show but I was so invested with the relationships and just I don't know the characters was so fun to watch 
And yeah, I, I still haven't seen the final 10 episodes and I really, really want to. I think I just, I don't know why I never watched the last season, but oh, Haunting of Hill House, I really enjoyed. There were some slow moments. I think some of the episodes were overly long and not all the characters worked for me. But the horror was really well done. I like that it was a horror series that actually had a story. And they're doing it again. They're doing a season two. I don't know how that's going to work. But for now, going from season one, I'd probably put it for enjoyment level. I'd put it below Buffy. It was great. It was really, it was really enjoyable. Um, I'm excited to see if season two is with the same. I don't see it being with the same characters. I think they'll do a new set of characters for season two. Which I think would be the wise choice for sure. The 100, fantastic. Probably my second favourite teen drama. If I was to really think about it. Uh, I, I'm going to put it all the way up here actually. I think writing wise it is better than Gossip Girl. I think Gossip Girl is more like enjoyment with... And is, I think it was a show because I didn't react to it. I just kind of sat back and just enjoyed it. That maybe I had like... Not that it's, you know, bad reacting to a show, but I couldn't binge react to Gossip Girl in one month, whereas watching the whole show in one month, I kind of have all those memories of it. But The 100 is definitely the better written show. Minus the first season, I think Gossip Girl's first season, and maybe even second season. No, no, season season two of The 100 was actually up there. <laughs> maybe still even its best season. Skins. Uh... See, it would it would actually be best of the best or at the top of Fantastic if seasons five and six didn't exist. Seasons one, two, three, and four are insane. They're so good, so well written. I think the characters are wonderful. I love that each episode focuses on a different character, and then the finale of each season's kind of all of them. But seasons five and six, they're not the worst seasons in the world. They're not. They're not. They're not even bad. But Compared to seasons one to four, just doesn't hold up. So if I'm going for the show as a whole, I'd probably put it top of great, just above Shadowhunters. It does have flaws because of those last two seasons, but seasons one to four, I can't deny it. And just, oh, they're just wonderful. <laughs> I don't know why as a kid, but I, when, whenever I watched Skins, I was like, I always wanted to be <laughs> a character from Skins, even though their lives were trash. <laughs> I don't know why, I, just, uh, I love that show so much. And again, good memories watching it. The Office, I've not complete. I've not completed, like it's a game. I've not finished all of The Office, I think I'm on season four. I'm near the end of season four. And I, does, I, I have heard that it kind of, you know, wavers towards the last couple of seasons. But where I'm, for a comedy, where I'm at now, I'd put it probably in great. Maybe just below you. Characters are great. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's a hard one. Because it's like you have to kind of like look at everything. It's like the story of The Office doesn't really exist. There isn't really a story. There is, but it's not really. It's just the comedy that works so well and the timing. Everyone's just on point with everything. Uh, so, yeah, maybe I'll put it above you. I wouldn't say I prefer it to Shadowhunters though. No, I, I, I love Shadowhunters. So Scream, okay, the first kind of tragic TV show. Technically, it would be there. Technically. But what's happening what's, what's happening with Scream, the TV series? Like, I swear, correct me if I'm wrong, they finished filming season three a couple of years ago now. And it's just been in development hell. Like, it's just stuck. Where they can't do anything with it. It's so weird, that TV show is, like, with season three. Um... One of the first TV shows that I actually reacted to, like if you watch my reactions to Scream, I think most of them are blocked now, but I had, I had a lot of fun with it. I, I'd put it there. I think it is a really, really bad TV show, but I enjoyed reacting to it. And f just for the enjoyment level, I'd put it in there, even though technically it's there. <laughs> and there was one character that I actually really liked. I forgot her name. Um... It's been so long, I've actually forgot a name, but if you saw my reactions, you know what I was on about. So, yeah, I'd say it was like a meh kind of show. It, I don't know. It had, it had moments, it had moments. Sons of Anarchy, again, 
has great moments. Seasons one and two, four and five, I think it is. Or it might just be five, and maybe not four. I don't know. A great, like they're really well done. And then they just kind of drop the ball at times. Uh, the characters are really good though. I think the the um, bond between them all, like the the motorcycle club, even though I'm not like you know, oh bikes for life kind of <laughs> kind of lifestyle. I don't know, it makes you care about the characters. OP is great. Jax, I actually really like him as a main character. But it does have flaws, so I'd probably put it... I'd put it in great, just below Buffy. Um, yeah, it's definitely a flawed show. How to Get Away with Murder. So well written. I'm, I know I'm behind on this show. I think I'm... I only got into about three episodes of the latest season, so I, I do have a lot to catch up with that. And I do intend... I do honestly really intend on finishing reacting to that show because I've reacted to so many episodes of every season pretty much. Uh, well, literally every season apart from the, the, you know, the one that I'm on at the moment. So I do want to finish it. I love it though. I think season three definitely had down moments and even season four had a few weak moments. But season one and two were insane. I love them. I think the characters are great. Honestly, I'd put it is... I'd put it maybe at the top of Fantastic. No, I prefer the 100. I'd put it there. Uh, really well, Viola Davis is spectacular. Maybe mm, one of the best a actors in a TV show, I'd say. So, oh, I love her. It makes me actually want to watch the show again. I've just seen it there. I'm like, I do miss How to Get Away with Murder. I really want to get back into it. Hopefully before season six comes out, because then I'll feel like I'll have way too much to kind of catch up on house of cards seasons one and two was just spectacular i loved them and i think even season three i think season three had a few slower moments but the the sad truth about this show is as hard as it is to admit is kevin spacey and robin wright's uh kind of characters worked so well together that when netflix made the the right choice to take kevin spacey out of it it just kind of didn't work for me. Uh, even the season before he was out of it, it was kind of flaunting a bit. So I think if you're going off season one and two, it would genuinely be up here. But because of ev all the shit that happened to it since, I'd honestly put it down at the top of enjoyable. It's kind of, it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad to see it down there. But honestly, it became a bit of a bore. They start to focus, focus way too much on the side characters, which no one really cared about so yeah seasons one and two was so good it's so good it's sad to sad what happened to that actually but yeah i don't know it's a shame base motel best of the best i think i'd, I'd, I'd love that show so much so much five seasons as well they just knew when to end it they didn't drag it out there were a few stories in there that felt a bit dragged out and you know some side characters that went a bit eh. So it does have flaws, it's not a perfect show, but I think the acting, especially from Fred, uh, Vera Farmingas throughout the entire show, and then Freddie Highmore, especially in the final season, I, I thought he should have won an Emmy for Best Actor with the final season. I thought he was, oh, he was so good. Still one of the best roles, uh, acting roles for me in a TV show. I, I don't know, I just love him. There's just something about the show as well that I really, really like, so... Again, not perfect, but I, I enjoyed it. I think, again, the acting was just mwah, beautiful. Scam, probably the best show that I've reacted to. That was the that was the big one, the one that kind of changed <laughs> how I do YouTube in a way because now it's just, you know, doing all the scam remakes and stuff. Not that, not that that is a bad thing. I enjoy doing that, but it is, you know, a lot of my channel is very focused on just the scam stuff, which I'm so grateful for. Wonderful, wonderful show for expertly crafted seasons I, I don't know how they, i don't know how they did it <laughs> it's just so good and yeah i've rewatched it a couple of times now it still holds up i still stand by season two being the best season but season three uh, one three and four as well were, they're all just up there it's insane the acting especially from the actor who plays isaac who i always say his name wrong so i apologize but especially from him but again all of the acting <laughs> is just wonderful so of course, it's all the way up here. I prefer Lost, personally, but I do really, really enjoy Scam. Just best of the best. If you haven't watched Scam, watch Scam. You won't regret it.
Doctor Who. Well, that, that's an interesting one because as a kid, <laughs> as a kid, I loved this show. And again, I know a lot of people still kind of on with the show and enjoying it. I, I stopped basically when David Tennant left, which I feel like a lot of people kind of did. I just couldn't with any of the other Doctors and I've, I've not really got back into it since and I don't really plan on doing so because there's so much to catch up on. But for what it was, especially as a kid, I, Christopher Eccleston, seasons one, two, three and four, I want to say. The Weeping Angels, oh my God, like The Weeping Angel is, the Blink is still the creepiest, one of the creepiest TV episodes I've ever seen. Oh, that gives me shivers, dude. Even what I re, I've rewatched that episode recently, like a couple of years ago. And it still just gives me chills. The music in it, so eerie. That's like one of the best TV episodes of all time. It's a 10 out of 10, I just I love it. Um, but anyway, Doctor Who as a whole though, I'd say is enjoyable. Um, again, as a kid, I really did like it, but as of now, as a show as a whole, like I say, I've not seen the recent seasons, but it just doesn't look like something I'd be mm, too interested in, so yeah. Maybe I'll give it another chance one day, who knows. American Horror Story, eh, <laughs> tricky one. I feel like seasons one and two were really, 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 really good. I enjoyed Roanoke as well. I know a lot of people have problems with Roanoke, but I think that had moments. But there were just some seasons in there that I just kind of trashed. The only one that I've not seen, oh no, there's two that I haven't seen. Hotel and Freak Show. I don't know why I haven't react, uh, reacted to those because I did plan on doing so, but I just haven't got around to it. And yeah, like I say, there's just some episodes. It feels like with American Horror Story, even with the late season, you'd have like a really good episode then just one that was kind of trash. So as a whole, I'd say American Horror Story is enjoyable. Um, I'd say the top of enjoyable though. I'd say it's overall better than House of Cards, which is weird because, you yeah. know, Vikings, I have not caught up on Vikings. I've heard incredible things about the show and I do want to get back. That is a show I do genuinely want to get back into. But I just, again, haven't had the time. I think I got to season four. I think I finished season three and I was about to start season four. So I know I'm very far behind, but I'd say it was honestly fantastic. I, it was so well done. The action was great. The acting was really well done. I don't know how accurate it actually is, but I heard it is very accurate. Um, so, yeah, I'd say it's... I, I enjoyed Gossip Girl more, like I enjoyed that show more. But I think, yeah, technically Vikings would be way better <laughs> than a lot of those shows. But you know, you know, you know how this works now. Sense8, I never watched season two of that. I think this is a show that a lot of people really, really love. And it's a show that I can understand why a lot of people love. But for me, it's, I enjoyed it. But I'd put it at the bottom if I, I preferred all these shows more. I don't know. Maybe I need to give it another chance, but for me, I think it was the characters. I felt like half the cast I just didn't care for. And then there was no real character that I loved. Like, I loved that character. They were all just kind of likeable. I liked them, you know what I mean? Um, oh, The Flash. Trash. Absolute trash. I gave up on the whole Arrowverse a long time ago. I think after season two of Arrow, I start season three and then dropped it. I watched season one of The Flash and I was just like, no, it didn't even bother season two. So, again, it's, it shows that I, I can understand why people get enjoyment out of them, but for me, I just I just can't with them. So, yeah, <laughs> The Flash for me is trash. Prison Break, again, has flaws. Season one is a 10 out of 10. Season one is incredible. And even season two, I'd say, is kind of up there with an 8 out of 10, I'd say. But... Again, then they started to drag it out and it kind of got a bit all, a bit messy and all over the place. But it's an enjoyable one. I'd probably put it in great, maybe. I'd say it's better than Sons of Anarchy overall. I think Sons of Anarchy has better characters. Sons of Anarchy has better characters, but Prison Break Season 1 is just insane. I don't know, maybe I do prefer Sons of Anarchy. I don't... Mm, nah, I think as a whole, Prison Break's better. Better than Buffy, for now, sure. Better than you, yes. Better than The Office, yeah. Not as good as Shadow as though. So, yeah. Stranger Things, fantastic. Maybe maybe actually best of the best. Yeah, best of the best. Not as good as Pace, though. I can't wait for season three, I really hope. If, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but the creators know that they want to do 
four or five seasons. So it feels like they've already got the show planned out and that's always better. So I, hope, I really hope they just stick to what they want to get done and don't drag it out for eight seasons because there's a story here and it's done so well up to this point that I, I would just be sad if it kind of falters in quality. It's a show that I see every season being as good as the last if they do stick to just four or five. So time will tell with that one, but as for now, it's best of the best. Big Bang Theory is absolute trash. I actually used to enjoy that as a kid, and then I turned four years old and grew a brain. I just can't with that show. It's just the basic form of humour for me. <laughs> I don't know. I actually used to enjoy it, but no. Game of Thrones. Oh, God. Why? It, it honestly would have been above Lost. It would have been there, and then the final season, you just... Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'm still sorry about the last season, dude. It's not there, obviously. It's not there anymore. Um, it's still a really well-done show, though. It's like, even with the last season, it's just... Such, I don't know how to explain it. It's such a hard one to talk about, because you can't talk about how great the writing and the story is, because it all completely falls through at the end. So you actually can say the writing and the story and the character arcs and everything is expertly done, which it is up until that last season where it just completely unravels. None of it matters. You kind of watch it at the end. You're like, what, what was the point? What was the point? Um, but if I'm going into the show as a whole, it's still one of the best created shows of all time. Uh, so I'd put it... Mm, just below scam y yeah there as a whole it is it, c it would have been better than lost and scam it would have been probably my favorite show mm. of all time well no it wouldn't have been because there's a show that's better than that but it would have been my second favorite show of all time if the last season was just if they just hit the nail on that they were given a silver plan it felt like the creators just didn't give a shit anymore so very much a shame scam italia my favourite remake for now, Druk is very close. I'd put Italia in... I don't know, where would I put Italia? Scam Italia is... Better than Buffy. Better than you. Better than The Office. Better than Prison Break, yeah, honestly. Not as good as Shadowhunters though, in all honesty. So yeah, Scam Italia I'd put there. And, you know, we've got some more scam remakes coming up, but that's probably my favourite remake for now. But Druk is very close. Druk is very close. Daredevil. I still need to watch season three of that. I've heard amazing things about season three. So I, I want to get on that soon. But seasons one, two, probably my favourite superhero TV show. Jessica Jones would have been up there, but season two of Jessica Jones was just terrible. Not terrible, I didn't even finish it, so I can't speak for season two, but I, I didn't vibe with it too much. Daredevil, though, I'd honestly put as... I'd put, I'd put it at the top of great. Yeah, I'd put it there. I think after watching season three as well, I'll see it going up a tier because I've heard great things about season three. So we'll see. Rain, I do plan on still reacting to that show. I've had a lot of problems with the company behind it. For some reason, they just do not like people reacting to Rain. So that's, that's a bit weird, but I really enjoy the show. I think it, it definitely has flaws. It's so historically inaccurate that it's kind of funny. Like, it's always funny when they're doing a dance scene and then Ed Sheeran starts playing and I'm just all lord and I'm like, eh. Don't know if that's kind of right, but <laughs> we'll, we'll go along with it, sure. Adelaide Kane is a beauty. Where, where is she? Oh, Adelaide Kane. So, still. Oh, love my life. I love her. So... Yeah, but we can't put it too high up just because of Adelaide Kane, as much as I really want to. I enjoy the show. I think it has flaws, like I said. I'd probably put it... Um, again, I haven't finished the show. I'm near the end of season two. I think I haven't watched it in a couple of months, which is kind of bad. But I'd put it maybe... there. I'd be happy with that. No, actually... Nah, it's not as good as The Office. 
That's be like realistic. Uh, you. You's better. You you is a better show already. I loved season one of that. I'd say it's better than Buffy. Uh, actually, <laughs> yo, this is hard. Why is rain so difficult? I'd say I prefer it to Buffy for now, but Buffy is very quickly. Yeah, Buffy is very quickly, you know, going to take over. I'll see Buffy in the next few episodes going way up this list because it's just. I think I'm like kind of salty Buffy because I just watched the worst Buffy episode ever. I gave it like a 2 out of 10. So bad. Um, so, is that e bad eggs episode? It's weird. Westworld. A lot of people have flaws with this show and I do understand it. I think they, you know, they get a bit. Oh, look how smart we are, you know, we, we've created such an intricate, great show, and it's like, it's not really that intricate, it's just, yeah, it has clever moments, but I feel like the HBO will, the creators think the show is better than it is at times, if that makes any sense, but it is still a really good show. Um, I think the one episode in season two was like a 10 out of 10, there was one episode in season two where it's the, the guy's past, I forgot his name. Emmy worthy. I thought I loved that episode so much. I think it may have been nominated for an Emmy for best episode. Correct me if I'm wrong. I might be wrong in that. And yeah, it's got that like Red Dead Redemption feel to it, but with a bit more. And I enjoy it. I'd probably say it's maybe here. I'd say it's better than Haunting of Hill House for sure. Uh, I'd say it's better than Sons of Anarchy, but I, I do prefer Buffy. Again, more enjoyment out of Buffy. I feel like Westworld sometimes it's just like it's a bit boring at times. And like I say, I don't know. We'll see though. Season three next year. <laughs> Elite. I was surprised by that. I, I really enjoy I feel like I'm going to be putting a lot in the great category because this, again, I guess I've just watched a lot of great shows, which is kind of nice. But I'd put that not as good as Westworld, not as good as Sons of Anarchy, but maybe better than Haunting of Hill House. I really like the characters in that. Uh, I'm excited for season two. And there's Guzman and Nadia. They were, oh, they were just adorable. I love those two characters, so yeah. Scam France, season one and two were trash. It hurts me to say because I love the cast and crew behind it, but it was kind of trash. Season three, though, and season four so far, which I'm only halfway through, are wonderful. So I'd put... Show as a whole, though, maybe I'll put it at the top of enjoyable. It's here or there, if I'm being honest, because season one and two exist. <laughs> like, season one and two still exist. If, uh, if you're going from season three and four, up there, without a doubt. Like, season three, actually, no, more so up here somewhere. But because of season one and two, um, I'd honestly have to put it there, which, hurt, like I say, hurts me to do. But Jessica Jones, season one would have been best of the best. I thought season one was a nine out of ten, maybe. David Tennant was great as the villain. But season two exists, so I'd have to put it... Honestly, honestly Daredevil's better at this point, so I'd put it all the way down... Maybe here... Nah, I'd say it's better than Westworld still. And better than Buffy and Rain. Yeah, I'd say season one is still really, really good, so. Mr. Robot, I think I'm one season behind on Mr. Robot, but it's so well written, so well acted. One of the most slept on TV shows of all time. I feel like nobody really talks about it, which is weird because it's so good. I'm curious how it'll end. I think season four is the final season, so I'm glad they're wrapping it up and I'm curious to see what they do. But yeah, it's kind of unfortunate that not more people talk about the show. But I don't talk about it much either, so I'm one of those people, despite having seen season one and two. I'd say it's great. I'd put it, just for the writing, I'd put it better than Prison Break and Talia. Uh, but I get more enjoyment out of Shadowhunters. So, I'd put, I'd, like I say, technically this would be at the top of great or even in fantastic, but... You got, I'm just taking enjoyment into it, into account. Better Call Saul. Jesus, there's so many. <laughs> Sorry if we're going to be here for a while, like I say. Better Call Saul. Uh, I think I'm a few episodes behind. Maybe I'm a season behind. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I think I'm like four episodes behind. 
Really good, actually. A lot of people, I think, went into it not enjoying it because they were comparing it to Breaking Bad too much. It's not like Breaking Bad. It does have, obviously, elements that are very similar to Breaking Bad, and it's, it, but it doesn't need to be like Breaking Bad. Vince Gilligan created Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul. While it is a spin-off, it needed to be its own show, and I think it does a very good, wonderful job of, being, of doing that. So, honestly, I'd put it up here. I'd, I'd say the top of great, honestly. Actually, no, I'd say it's actually fantastic. I really, really enjoy it. Um, I'd say it's better than Vikings. I enjoy Gossip Girl more, so I'd keep it there. But again, another slept on show. I don't see anyone really talk about that, of course, all, but it's so well written. Give it, another, give it another chance if you kind of gave up on it. And Mike as well, the character Mike Herman Trout is just... <laughs> I love him. The Vampire Diaries, again, it's not a show that I finished. I dropped this halfway through season four. Seasons one, two, and three were really, really good. I actually, I've rewatched those so much. I, mean, I have so many good memories of watching this with my sister. Uh, I think we watched seasons one to three, maybe three times. <laughs> so, I'd put it... I've heard it kind of loses that it loses itself after season four. I, I I can't comment on that. I'm just going from what I've seen. From what I've seen, I'd say it's there. Yeah, I have a lot from it. Dexter would be best of the best. The final two seasons, however, do exist. <laughs> In the world of Dexter, they exist. That ending exists, which is so unfortunate. So it would have been best of the best, but I'd put it probably there. No, I'd prefer to get away with murder. I, I really like Dexter. I, I love Dexter so much. Such a... Uh, such a great show, but the final two seasons do definitely kind of lose that. Because uh, it, it would have been on the top tier. Shameless US. I've only watched season one of this. I'm going to be starting season two this week and reacting to that as well. So again, can only comment from what I've seen so far. But I do really like the characters. I think Fiona... Ian and Lip, wait, Ian and Lip, yeah, uh, great, I love those characters so much. Frank's really well acted, but he's just a character that I just don't like, but the actor plays him so well. Uh, and yeah, it's just, a, it's just a nice, enjoyable show. I think there's a couple of weak episodes in there, some story arcs I did not care about. I think there was, like I say, some early episodes that were very hard to get into. But around episode six of season one, the Killer Carl one, that's when I really started to love the show and the last few episodes I adored. So for now, I see it going up a lot more depending on how certain seasons are. But for now, I'd put it above Elite. But not as good as Sons of Anarchy. I, see, I do see it going up more though, for sure. The Walking Dead, seasons one to six, I'd say are fantastic. The, la the last season was okay, and then the two seasons before that were just awful. Like, they were really, really bad. They had a couple of episodes, but overall they were just trash. Like, if I was going from, if I was going to season seven and eight, it would honestly be there. Seasons one to six, though, I loved. I had a moment, I think around season six, where I was considering if, uh, if The Walking Dead was my favourite show. Looking back at that now, I'm like, why did I even think that? But I don't know, I was just so invested in it and then I just you know as soon as the premiere of season 7 happened and we went to episode 2 and then onwards I was just a bit like Ugh. so yeah The Walking Dead I'd put um, maybe there I'd put it above Daredevil I'd put it at the top of there just because of what it was <laughs> Like, as the show as a whole, it's allowed one to what six seasons of really great stuff, at least for me. So, yeah. Arrow is better than The Flash. Actually, I'm going to put, honestly, Sensei, I'm going to put down there. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just, yeah, it's just a mess show for me, if I'm being completely honest. And Arrow, I'd say, is there as well, but it's better than Sensei. Because I was looking at it, I was like, I wouldn't say Arrow belongs in enjoyable but I do prefer it to Sensei, so, yeah. Banshee, 
I've literally seen no one talk about this show, but it's one of the best shows I've ever seen. Best of the best. <laughs> but I'd put it at the bottom of best of the best. I love Banshee. Watch it. Season four's a bit... Mm. And there's some audio choices in the earlier episodes that are abysmal. But the action is really well done. I like the characters. I think sometimes the characters are a bit annoying and tragic and the, the writing for some of the characters are a bit bad. But I don't know, I just love the town of Banshee. I like the idea of, kind of, I guess, a bit spoilery for the pilot, but this criminal taking on the role of a sheriff accidentally, or well, not accidentally, he purposely does it, but you know, no one, no one knows that he's actually a criminal being a sheriff. So, so the creator of True Blood, and I think overall it's a way better show than True Blood. So give it a go. It's only four seasons, around 10 episodes a season. Um, and yeah, it does have ups and downs, but overall I just have a lot of fun with it. The end of the fucking world. Where is season two of this show, dude? God, so, so well acted, very well written again, but just waiting on that second season. This surprised me. I like. I remember reacting to episode one and two and being like, okay, cool. And then episode three, I think it was episode three, hit out of nowhere, and I was like, okay. <laughs> so I think really started to pick up. Overall, I'd say it's at the bottom of great. No, I'd say it's better than 13 Reasons Why. Not as good as Haunting of Hill House, though. It is, it is really good, though. I don't know. It's, it is really good. The originals, honestly, just a mess show for me. I'd put it at the top of there. I tried to give it a chance. I don't know. I feel like maybe it's a show that's better just to watch instead of react to. I found it very tricky to react to that show. And I don't think I'll continue it, if I'm honest. Because, uh, I don't know. I love Klaus and I love Elijah. I love Rebecca. I love the characters so much. And it was actually surprisingly very well written and... You know, very different to the Vampire Diaries. Not very different, but different to the Vampire Diaries. But I just, I don't know, I found Trump, I found it hard to react to. It was, it was a weird one. So maybe I'll just end up watching that show off camera and then maybe doing a review at the end of every season. Maybe that'll satisfy some people, I don't know. Love. Oh, great. Just, to, yeah, up here. I'd say it's better than Banshee, better than Stranger Things, better than Bates Motel, better than 24, not, not as good as Game of Thrones. Watch this show. It is on Netflix. I've heard some people, you know, say they hate it, which I do get. It's a very simple show. They're only they're only around thirty minutes an episode, and there's only three seasons. And that's the end. I think the third season could have been a little bit better as well. But I I just the characters are so good, especially Mickey, uh, played by Jillian Jacobs. I want to say her name is she's from uh, she's from Community. Yeah, a wonderful, wonderful show. Definitely check it out. And the comedy is really good in it as well. So, uh, Fear the Walking Dead. Honestly, as of recently. No, I was going to put it in there, but the la the premiere of the new season just leaves me so uninterested. I, I was meant to react to episode two of Fear the Walking Dead yesterday, as of recording this. And I just could not bring myself to do it because there's nothing for me to be invested in or excited about. Like other shows that I'm reacting to, it's like I want to react to the next episode. Like Buffy, I'm like, I want to react to the next one. I keep, want to keep going. The 100 at the moment, I just want to keep going. Fear the Walking Dead, I had no interest in reacting to episode two. I'm still going to stick with it for a little bit and hopefully there'll be something that will grasp me. But it needs to do it quick because I'm considering just dropping reacting to this show, to be honest. I'd say enjoyable, uh, maybe there at the moment. It was at a time in great, I put it like mid great at a time, it was really good. Like when season three, when season three was around and it was around the shitty part of The Walking Dead, you were like, oh, Fear the Walking Dead's better than The Walking Dead at the moment. And now I'm just like, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Druk, very close to being my favorite remake. I'm going to see how they handle season four and I'm going to see how Italia handles season four and then compare those two and then decide overall which is my favourite remake. But for now I'm going to go Italia just because season one of Druk was weakish. It wasn't awful, it wasn't as bad as Scam France as season one, but it was just kind of eh. Whereas Scam Italia, Scam Italia's first season was fantastic and his second season. Scam Italia's third season was a bit... 
eh, but it was better than Drugs first season. So for that reason, I'd go there, just below Italia. It's very, it's very, very close though. Because season three of Drug was just in, and season two as well, but season three, oof. True Blood, I'd put it as enjoyable. I'd put it at the top of enjoyable, to be honest. It does, seasons one, two, and three are really strong, and then it just kind of falls apart. Um, the ending, I ended I, I tried to watch this show about four times, eventually ended up finishing it, and it was just, yeah, cool. It was <laughs> one of those, so yeah, enjoyable. Banshee's way better. The Punisher, I'd put in great, probably, maybe here. It's better than The Vampire Diaries. Honestly, I, I enjoy it more. I don't think it's as well written as Mr. Robot. But I'd love to, I just love John Barenthal. Fuck, he's so good. Yeah, I'd probably put it there. Breaking Bad is the best show of all time. <laughs> like, straight up, it's just the best show of all time. I'm... Mm, I'm re-watching it for the sixth time at the moment, and it's just... Yeah, there's a reason. It's, it's a very obvious choice, but there is a reason for that. So good. Pretty Little Liars. Oh my god. All over the bloody place with this, but... Seasons 1, 2, and 3 were wonderful. Seasons 4, 5, and I'm halfway through season 6 at the moment. They have moments, but if they just made the seasons, like, 12 episodes a season or something, we'd be fine. We'd honestly be fine, but no, they, cons they insist on still making them 20 to 25 episodes a season, and it really shows. I think it's all over the place. The characters just piss me off a lot of the time. But seasons 1, 2, and 3, and even 4, and 5, and 6, they're just in they're enjoyable. I'd honestly put it in great, because it's, but probably, like, there for now. And Shameless is definitely going to overtake Pretty Little Liars, eventually. Um, and Pretty Little Liars will probably even go down further than that. Avatar The Last Airbender, oh my god, I just finished, literally... Two days ago, watched the final four episodes of that show, and yo, <laughs> that is along with Scam the best show that I've re reacted to hands down. I was just so surprised by how much I ended up loving this show because uh, yeah, I was one of those few people who didn't grow up with it. But yeah, honestly, I'd put it, I'd probably put it there above, just above Scam. I think, I think Avatar and Scam are kind of tied. I do think it is technically better than Lost, but I just I have a soft spot for Lost. So Avatar is my third favourite show of all time for now, in all honesty. I, oh, I was so blown away by it. A third tied with Scam. I, th I feel like this and Scam could go either way and I'd be happy. Um, I'm just going to put Avatar there for now because I'm on the high of having just finished it. So, But that and Scam, I do think are just basically in the same place. So, yeah. Teen Wolf, you know, after reacting to some of the shit that I've reacted to recently, I honestly just miss Teen Wolf, which is weird. I think season 5 is abysmal. I think 6B is awful and the ending was so unsatisfying. There were so many missed opportunities with that show. Seasons 1 and 2 as well kind of had a lot of cringy, just awful, very awful dialogue. However, <laughs> season 3 is one of the best TV series, but uh, one of the best TV seasons that, that I've reacted to, and season four, I love season four, like, I love that that was just 12 episodes, and basically every episode minus one of season four was great, and 6A as well was beautiful, but they just completely dropped the ball, 6B, ugh, if they just ended it well, Team Wolf would be so high up, but I'm going to put it... Below you, yeah, I'd say you's better consistently. It is a really good show, and I've, it had the potential to be higher than that, but yeah. Orange is the New Black, honestly, meh for me. It just turned boring, really boring, so yeah. There. Very boring show. Heroes. In, I'd say enjoyable, probably towards the top end of enjoyable. 
better than American Horror Story. Not as good as Scam Friends. So I think season one is like a nine out of ten. I really love season one. And then after that, it's just kind of like okay, I guess. So yeah. Riverdale. <sighs> <laughs> It's funny, season one and two would have been way high up here, but season three, my god. Uh, there, yeah, Heroes is better. Season three, they better pick it back up in season four, I swear to god. Godless, check this one out, it's on Netflix, it's only seven episodes long, they're only doing one season, they're not doing any more, the story's wrapped up. Uh, Jack O'Connell's in it, and he's wonderful in it, as well as, I forgot his name, I forget his name, but the geese from Dumb and Dumber, not Jim Carrey, the other one. Oh, what's his name? I forgot, but you know what I mean. It's a really, really good show, actually, I enjoyed it. Just a nice watch, I think I watched it all basically within two days. Um, I, think, I think they're all on Netflix, so, yeah, I'd honestly put it... Because it is only one season, it is very short. I'd put it there. Like, there's a lot more to Westworld. It's kind of like Westworld. It's, it's a Western. Um, but something different. I enjoyed it. Check it out. Give the first episode a go. See if it's your thing. True Blood. Oh, there's True Blood. True Blood's twice. I saw another one that we've already had as well. Yeah, Stranger Things here. So I'll put those two down there. Because we have done those two already. Uh, the Mighty Boosh. I've got like three or four UK comedies coming up, so this will be interesting. The Mighty Boosh is just insane. <laughs> Growing up with that show as a kid, and I, I loved it. I loved it so much. Milky Joe, still one of my favourite episodes ever. So, uh, I'd put it... It's def definitely, definitely not for everyone. Some A lot of people I know hate this. But I'd put it above Elite. Uh, the IT crowd, I think, is a better comedy, but I just personally prefer the Mighty Boosh. I do think the IT crowd's a bit like funnier though. Um, but yeah, I'd say there. Jesus, the great pile has just got insane. <laughs> I just thought I'd go bunk. So the night of. Uh, Again, great, yeah. It's, it's only one season, it's only a few episodes long, so check it out. Riz Ahmed is really good in it. But it was very short. I, I, it wasn't much to get invested. It was okay, it was okay. No, it, it was great. It was great, but what am I saying? Very well written. I think the acting is really good. I think it's just more so the ending I felt a bit unsatisfied with, personally. I know a lot of people really like the ending, but I preferred it to Godless, if I'm talking like short TV show. Yeah, I'd put it there. In Between Us is probably my favourite UK comedy. It's definitely better than, it's funnier than The Office, it's better than that. Probably better than Skins? Yeah, it's more consistent. Yeah, it's one of the, it's one of the funniest, actually, you know what, I'm just going to put it in Fantastic, it's probably the funniest show ever <laughs> for me. So, again, not for everyone, but... True Detective. I've only seen season one of this, so I'm only going from season one. I've not watched season two because everyone shat on it. Season three I've heard a little bit better, but still not up there with season one. But because I have only seen season one, it would go there, just above Banshee. I, I feel like if I watch season two and three, I know it will go down, so I'm just refusing to. <laughs> Mindhunter was enjoyable. I think the first episode was... Awful. Um, so yeah, I put it there. It, it was okay. I had moments. As, to be fair, get through episode one. It really picks up after that. Episode one was very hard though, for me to like want to watch the second episode, but I did. And they're doing a season two, of course. So, Narcos. I've only watched season one and two. I stopped as soon as you know the end of season two happened. And I've no real need to go back and see what happens next like i'm not that bothered maybe i will i haven't heard much about if if it stays great because going from season one two i'd honestly put it up here uh not as good as bad or soul but better than vikings yeah 
Misfits, another good UK show that completely dropped the ball in the last couple of seasons. Just, oh. I put it as better than three reasons why, but not as good as the end of the fucking world. Dead to me, very surprisingly good. This is only one season, 10 episodes, 30 minutes long each. Came out last month and I watched it all within a couple of days. Very, very surprisingly good. I was, it had the actress from Scooby doing. <laughs> she was wonderful. Very excited for season two. It just got picked up for a second season. So I'd put it probably there for maybe better than Buffy. Nah, I, I enjoy it. But Dead to Me is really good. The Society. I've only got one more episode left to watch of that. I reacted to episode 9 today. I've still got episode 10 to do. It's good. It is good. There's some glaring flaws in it. I don't think the acting's always there. I think there's a lot they can work with. And it does depend on how it ends. Which I'm going to watch the finale tomorrow. So maybe I should have done this after that. But I'd say for now it's enjoyable. I wouldn't say it's anything great. Um... I'd probably put it there. It's better than Riverdale, fuck. No, I don't know, to be fair. <laughs> like, Riverdale season one and two did have some really great episodes, but season three of Riverdale was actually just trash. Whereas I feel like season one of the society so far has been good. And they had around three genuinely great episodes, I thought. So, uh, again, at the end of the day, it's a teen drama, so take that as you will. And it's nothing new, but the characters are cool. I'm, I'm invested. I want to see where it goes. So, yeah. Scream Queens. Uh, trash. Chad was funny. <laughs> I reacted to all of that as well, but season two, I just hated. I hated season two of that. So. The Sopranos, doo -doo -doo, I've not watched this in a long time, but this is obviously fantastic, so i say it's better than, not as good as, uh, yeah, better, better than Better Call Saul, better than Gossip Girl, better than Black Mirror, yes. And with an E, yes. How to Get Away with Murder, yes, but not as good as Dexter for me. Yeah, that looks about right. Big Little Lies Season 2 just had its premiere two days ago. And I still need to watch that, but uh, honestly, fantastic. Season one was really well done, but I'd probably put it in the bottom of fantastic right there. So, yeah, that is everything. Wow, <laughs> that, took, that took a while. That took almost an hour, I think. So, apologies that that took so long, but there's a lot of shows to get through. I don't know how many exactly are here, but that's the kind of gist of where all my TV shows would rank. If that's basically every TV show that I've completed. Um, or have seen enough off to really get a feel for how I feel about it. Uh, not every TV show, there's a couple more, but they were just kind of, you know, like ones that weren't really all that interesting to see where I kind of ranked it. So, yeah, thank you so much, James, for making this list. Like I said, I'll leave a link to it down below, as well as the one where it just shows that I've reacted to, and then list them. It's a lot shorter than this one. List them, send a screenshot of what you kind of showed, and I'm going to do an anime one next. <laughs> of the anime shows that I've seen a lot of. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Also comment down below any other tier list ideas that you kind of want. And I plan on doing the Lord of the Rings characters and Star Wars characters in the next few days. So until then guys, thanks for watching. This took a while, but yeah, Breaking Bad, Lost and Avatar and Scam, I'd say perfect for me. They're, they're the f only four perfect shows. Um, even though technically Lost is not a perfect show, for me, it's just those four. Oh. And yeah. Sorted. Until next time, guys. Peace.